did you know that the biggest announcements they made for Power BI on Ignite, you know, the Microsoft conference was about Excel? I will tell you this and all the Power BI news from Ignite in just a second. Let's get started. Okay, guys, you probably haven't missed it. This means Ignite, which is, I think, the biggest Microsoft conference they have this week, and they have been releasing all kinds of news for Azure, Dynamics, Power Platform. Yeah, but we're going to focus here on two big announcements they made for Power BI. And uh, the first one is that they have released a new generation, a new platform from, for the premium platform. And with that, they have released the price of the premium per user license. Let me show you what they say about this premium platform from the horse mouth itself. Let's get. Power BI Premium Gen 2 is here. It's a new and improved set of feature and architectural updates to our industry-leading solution, including flexibility to license per user or per capacity, faster processing, up to 16 times performance boost with Microsoft Managed Architecture, automatically adding capacity when needed with auto scale, and consistent and reliable cost management with utilization metrics. So basically what they are saying is that it is a lot faster. You have more flexibility to manage capacity and they have now released a price for the premium per user license, which is going to be $20 per user. If you don't know what premium per user license is, I have a video. So just go and check that out. Okay. But now you have the free license, you have the pro, which is $10, you have the premium per user, which is 20, which gives you a lot of the capabilities that the premium, the big brother $5,000 a month premium has at a $20 price, which is fabulous. I mean, there is a lot of small and medium businesses that will definitely benefit from that. And not only that, enterprise can also benefit from this. So when we were discussing about this on the community chat, you know, some of you were telling me, oh, this is too expensive. You know, I have too many users. The premium per user license is not meant to be used as a premium license. So if you have a lot of users, you still need to use premium. But premium per user license is going to be great for a small and medium enterprise. And even for enterprises like big companies, when you have like a big data set or you need to do something like paginated reports so things like that just for a smaller team so you don't need to have premium per user across your organization that's not the point but it will allow you to have premium features on teams so smaller teams or on your company if you're not that big so i really think that the 20 dollar pricing is very very clever it's not a high jump from the 10 dollar if you don't need premium don't upgrade obviously but if you need the premium capacity, it's, it's just such a fabulous price point. I think that they nail it. What to say? They, they're very, very clever. So give it a go. If you don't know what it is, again, I have a video. Check it out. Um, let's move to the second announcement. Okay, the second announcement is about the integration of Power BI and Teams. And before we go actually into the meat of what the actual update is, they said something on they have a session called Drive a Data Culture with Power BI and Microsoft Teams. I really recommend you to watch it. I'm going to post the link down below. But listen to this. Very, very interesting. We are using Power BI. Great. But if my tool of choice is Excel, uh, this also lets me launch into that tool, which we're going to come to in a second. So we just saw how we took Power BI and deeply integrated it into Teams across uh, channels in the, the workspaces that my teams use, a uh, personal location for me to go to find all of the data uh, and Power BI content that I use, and how it integrates deeply into conversations. And what we found, and this is a key point here, this is the key takeaway of this whole presentation, is that when we integrate Power BI into Teams, users use it way, way more. So if you have a Power BI deployment and you want to increase the amount that people are using data inside of your organization, here's a tip. You can take that Power BI app and you can pin it to the left rail. You can pre-install it for all your users and you can pin it to the left rail in Teams. And what we find is that when new users start using Power BI and they use it through this Teams integration, they're uh, multiple, multiple times more likely to become deeply engaged users with data. And so it's actually just this simple free way to drive usage inside of your organization and to increase the amount of data that's used in your organization. It 
Fabulous. Have you thought about it? It makes sense, actually, because we are spending more and more time on Teams. And the fact that you have your data available there, they will click on it. They will see the fabulous visualizations. They will be the first contact point with Teams, with Power BI. And I can see why it would drive more, more usage of Power BI, which is, of course, what the Power BI team is interested in. But what you are interested in is that your employees will use data or you will use the data if you are an employee, right? So I thought it was fascinating. The integration with team, they have the data, is driving the usage or the hi higher usage of Power BI, a higher disco discoverability of the product. It, it, what an insight, isn't it? I, I thought it was brilliant, actually. So obviously, we're probably going to see more and more integration into teams because this is very important for them, but also very important for the organization. So people are actually starting to become more data driven. Uh, brilliant. And while we're talking about adoption of Power BI, or the, increase the usage of Power BI. You know, they've been launching this data set feature for the longest time where you can, you know, add a data flow or a data set into Power BI service. And I've been always wondering, like, what, what is this all about? And especially the create a report on the service. You can actually create now Power BI. You have some limited capabilities about creating Power BI reports, but there are there. And I think I cracked that. Let's watch. To come to find this data. So here I can see we have our spring product launch, SKU details, store details, marketing. So they are showing uh, recommended data sets for users. So this is the experience that a user will have when going into Teams. They will see different data sets that somebody has published it for them. And on the top, they will see the certified and promoted data sets. Performance analysis. So now I, as an end user in an organization, know that I just go to Microsoft Teams and I can find all of the best data that I have access to and start analyzing on my own. And so not only can I find my, my uh, curated and featured reports that have been pre-created for me, now I can also find data uh, that I can use as well. So if I look at this marketing performance analysis, this is really great. It shows me uh, who published it, when it was published, when it was refreshed, but also gives me the ability to just with one click start analyzing this data. And so, okay, so you're new to Power BI. You go into Teams, you find this awesome data set that you actually need. You don't need to go to the hurdle of what is Power BI? How do I install something? How, with this created data set in Power BI service, you can actually start doing some own reporting without having to have any tool available or, you know, downloading the stuff or. Um, I get it now. I understand it. It would definitely drive more usage for Power BI. Then once this gets too small for you, you will go to the desktop. But I can see how this will drive usage for Power BI. I think it's brilliant. And now to the big announcement. Behold, Excel, let me find it first. OK, so now comes the big announcement. This is from a session called Drive a Data Culture with Power BI. I will link down below. Watch. Let's see how easy it is for Alan to build a pivot table to help his colleagues dig into the financial data. With just a click, he can open an Excel workbook that has a pivot table connected to the Power BI data set. We could do that before, right? So this is not the news. Then he drags and drops fields to build his analysis. After some formatting and adding a pivot chart, the workbook is ready to share. After some formatting, this is quite serious formatting, I think. Unless Excel has changed that much. <laughs> Now, typically, Alan shares his workbooks using OneDrive for business. Look for this. This is SharePoint. So this is what happened. You have a data set in Power BI. You connect to it through analyzing Excel. You create your own report, and you save it on SharePoint. Watch now. Or SharePoint site or a Teams channel. Traditionally, these workbooks used Excel desktop to refresh. So Alan and his colleagues needed to download the file to see the latest data. Now let me show you something that's coming soon and we've never shown before. Alan opens the file in Excel for the web. It opens live, refreshable, connected to the Power BI dataset. So now, before you lost the connection between the Excel and the Power BI, now you don't. When you open the file, it's still connected to the data source. 
This means everyone opening the file in the browser sees the latest data. But it goes further. In the web browser or embedded in Teams, users can make changes to the Power BI connected pivot tables. This runs new queries against the Power BI dataset and returns the relevant data. These connected work. So basically, you can create your own reports based on Power BI. So Power BI becomes a source rather than a BI tool. And then this Excel is the tool that is where you create your reports, which makes a lot of sense when you think about that there's one billion Excel users, right? So you definitely want to power that workforce to work with data and to become more data driven. Books can even be added to Power BI. Authors can make apps that bring together Power BI reports and Excel workbooks. So you can add the Excel workbook as an app, as a tab on an app. So if somebody has made a nice analysis of something and you want to add it to the original report, it could be an ad hoc thing, for example, following the pandemic, something that is going to die after a while. So this is a great way to do it. In Power BI, the workbooks are interactive and consumers can explore the data to answer their own questions. The ability so you can actually change, did you say that? You can actually change the report? In Power BI, the workbooks are interactive and consumers can explore the data to answer their own questions. So how, what happens when you save? Okay, I guess we'll figure it out when they release it. They haven't released this yet, right? They, they're just demoing, so it will come out and then we can test it. I hope that the changes don't stay, or if they stay, they stay just for that user, so otherwise it would be weird. Um, so, again, Power BI will be a source, and the analysis will be done in Excel, which makes sense to empower the billion of you, I think it's like one billion users Excel again. So to empower those people to be able to analyze the data and to make quick decisions. Okay, so those are the announcements for Ignite. Let me know which one is your favorite. I know that this is Friday, it was supposed to be the 200th Dax Friday's video. This is not the 200th Dax <laughs> Friday's video, don't worry. So you asked me to do something special, I have no particular idea as to what it could be. So how, why don't you give me some suggestions about what would you like to see on the 200th Dax Writers video? Otherwise, I will try to figure out something for next week. Anyhow, it is Friday. It is a weekend. Enjoy your weekend in the sun. There's a little bit of sun here, at least cold, but sunny. So I will see you on Monday with a Power BI or Power Query video. I'm not sure yet. Until then, take care. Bye bye.